Then uh, the point is that uh, I'm piping. Yeah. Now the point is in this case the test test the the calculation of the test statistic. So uh, the t statistic which follows the, the t distribution is is done like this. In the one sample case, it would it was a little bit different, but when we have two samples, we can say, okay, let's define first delta up there. Delta is the difference in mean between the two samples. And then we can test the hypothesis. Delta is equal to some var value, delta zero. Usually we will set that to zero since, since that means no difference. Then we conclude, con then if we can reject the null hypothesis, we can conclude that there is a difference. But we can set it to any value, delta zero. Then we calculate the Welsh two sample test statistic like this. So we take the difference in observed mean minus delta zero, which is usually just zero, divided with square root of the standard sample standard de uh, deviation divided by number of observations in, and for one sample, sample and for the other. So then we get the t test the t statistic which follows this distribution, and then we go out and say, what's the probability of getting, of observing a value in that distribution which is above the one that we actually observe? So, and we need to use, yeah, so here we can see it written as with a capital T and capital X, so it means that, that, the, that they are stochastic variables, can think about that, but that's how we would write it before we actually carry out the experiment. Uh, and then we need this formula to calculate the degrees of freedom, the t distributions with these degrees of freedom. So what I wrote here was n minus one. That was for one sample, uh, which is also what I said out here. I said for one sample, just the mean, but now we need to replace this when we have the two sample case with this expression, which is a little long and nasty, but uh, we'll see that we most of the time don't even need to, to it's implemented in R anyway. All right, so, and then you have this uh, method box in the E notes that sort of steps you through how to make a two sample uh, t-test. So compute the observed t distribution, uh, t test statistic, the t value, and the degrees of freedom, and then calculate the p value, and then compare it to alpha. And if it's below alpha, we can reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we say that we accept it. If we can reject it, we can conclude that that we have found statistical evidence or a st statistical significant. Uh, um, effect. So we can, for example, conclude that we have found out if we can reject the null hypothesis in the example that then it uses difference between the two hospitals. But anyway, we can also do a one-sided test where we say, okay, the, the null hypothesis is that the difference is, is greater than or equal to delta, or we can uh, and that should actually have been a delta zero here. That's a mistake, actually, I think. And, um, oh, and then we can take the, the negation of this expression and write it there, and then we, that is the alternative hypothesis. Then we can also do a greater than test, and the only difference is the, the null and the one hypothesis plus that then when we calculate the p-value, we need to do that different and not multiply with two and also flip the greater than. Okay. But that you can look to. Then I know that after speaking some time, I need to ask you a question. And so uh, I have a question for you to activate you, because otherwise you'll fall asleep listening to me talking and talking. So now I ask you, let's say in, in this case, 
And uh, you should either, on, on your phone, you can get this app called Socrative, which I think Pierre also used. Or you can go in on the website, Socrative.com. And then you need to go to the room PBAC. Because then I can ask you this question um, when I logged in this uh, one. So if you, if you find that, uh, what can you say? It's kind of slow. Yeah. Um, no. So then I have a question for you. I, I ask you to log in there, but I just need to log into this one. Ah. I know what it's doing. But anyway, now I ask you this question. Say that we have the sample mean of two samples. Say that we uh, have the difference between them. And now I write under H0, under the null hypothesis, that the difference is 40. And then I, s I have set some sample size and some sample standard deviations. So that's just set by me to make this little uh, question or example. And then I ask you which one of these probability density functions is then the, uh, can only be the one that, is, that, that, uh, that this difference, uh, the probability dif uh, distribution functions of this difference. Which one of these uh, four do you think uh, that is? Does that, does that make sense? And you can talk to your, uh, uh, the guy or, or, or girl next to, next to you. And when I write under the null hypothesis, then it means that I assume that the null hypothesis is true. We have five people answering. And the key really is that I write under H null, so under the null hypothesis. So that means in the case where, where the null hypothesis is true. Now I say the world is like this. That's what, when we, when we state a null hypothesis, we say the world is like this. This difference is 40. And then we, we know that it follows a test, a T distribution with this long expression for the degrees of freedom and, and things. But under the null hypothesis, which one of these uh, is then the distribution of this difference? I can see that uh, anyone else wants to answer, you can do that. Then it's uh, only 25 out of uh, 26. And only, not very many have actually answered the, the correct one. And that's because the correct one is not there. That's really embarrassing. <laughs> Holy ghost. Fuck, man. I, 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 Okay. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I did it just before I came out here, and uh, apparently, um, yeah, thanks to God. <laughs> and now it's recorded for the whip, and I'm totally a fool here, and... Uh, I, I, it needs to be stated, delta zero was 10. Uh, replace 
40 with 10. Yeah. Okay. Compile again. Crap. So, but probably you learned a lot by thinking, what, what is this guy? What is he doing? I mean, he must be lost in space or something. Kom nu, Dems. Hvad laver den? Ach. Ja. Kom så. Hvorfor gør den ikke det der? Hvad er det nu? Den er ikke opdateret. Oh. Ah. Så. Back again. Sorry. So now we'll just rewind time some uh, five, ten minutes, and uh, then I reached the point where I happily looks at my beautiful slide and say, "Wow, now I'm going to ask you a question. Do you all have this app Socrative that Pear uses? <laughs> yeah? Then uh, if you log into that, then you can answer this question that I, I posed to you. And the point is that, let's say that um, we, have, uh, we have two samples. And we have the sample mean, uh, the sample mean of these two. The difference of these two sample means, I can say, uh, follows a, a distribution. And if I say, under uh, the null hypothesis where I state that this difference is, is equal to zero. So now I say the world is such that the difference in mean is, is, is 10. And then I set some sample size of these two uh, samples and some sample standard deviations. And then I ask you, in this case, when the null hypothesis is true, which one of these probability density functions can it only be that this difference, uh, these two sample differences um, follows. And now things look much better here. Uh, we have 20 students at least, people a answering correctly, 80% almost. So sorry for spending a little bit, uh, some long time on this, the point is that the answer is, well, it's not. I state now that given the world is such that this difference is equal to 10, then it cannot be this distribution which is centered around zero. These two were centered around zero. It cannot. And B is centered around five, so, well, that's not the case. And as most uh, correctly answered, then it is, uh, the distribution the upper, in the upper plot, because it's centered around uh, 10. So given that the null hypothesis is true, this difference would be distributed like this when we set these, when we fix these values. Now the next question is, how, what would the distribution be? And uh, I, I miss a zero here, I, I'm sorry. But what would the difference of x2 minus x1 minus delta zero? So the distribution of that expression uh, up there, given that the null hypothesis is true. Which one of these uh, four probability density functions does this 
uh, stochastic variable follow then. A, B, C, or D. Ten people answered mostly correct, so, but maybe a little, few more if you discuss a little bit. So now I take the difference x of the two sample means, which was before distributed like on A around 10, given that, that H, that the null hypothesis is true. And now I subtract, and it should be a zero there, delta zero. Now I subtract delta zero from that. And then, then the distribution is, as most answered correctly, 80%, the distribution is C. Because what we do is that we have first before it was A, and now we subtract delta zero, and then of course it's centered around zero, the distribution. And therefore it's answer C. Now, the last question is, which distribution would then actually the test statistics that we're gonna use, which of these four would it, uh, does that follow? Uh, in this case. Now there are not that many left and it should be rather obvious. If it makes sense. Ten people answering. Twenty-five. It's 60% that answers correctly. The answer now is D. Because what I've done is that I have divided with something. So I came from C to D by dividing with a value which is obviously higher than 1. Because then, uh, or oh, I'm not sure. But then it narrows in to, to be the T distribution. So my point that I was trying to make is that first we start out with asking a question about the difference in sample mean and then what we need to do is to, we call it also standardize or transform this into the test, the T, uh, the, the stochastic variable T that follows a T distribution. So given that the null hypothesis is true, this value, the T, would have this probability density function. And it's in, in that PDF that we do these things. So the point is, in, in real units, you could say, or in the original units of X, so energy use, that make a joule, that would be A. That's how things are distributed up there. But when we do the test, we scale it down. We, we shift it over here to be around zero. And then we scale it down to this T distribution. That's a, because that's a little bit tricky thing. Why is it this T distribution all the time? That's because what we say is that if H null, if the null hypothesis was true, then if we subtract, this should be delta zero. If we subtract that uh, and divide with this uh, uh, numerator, uh, enumerator, and then then we end up in this distribution, which is a t-distribution with these degrees of freedom that we should also calculate. And it's in that that we say, okay, if we observe a t-value out here, or out here in the, in the two-sided test, 
then it's very unlikely that this was actually, that the null hypothesis was actually true, and therefore we have to reject it. But we have to take this step and scale it to the T distribution. Okay. So in the case of this example with this nutrition study, the idea, uh, or we will simply uh, do this, we will say H null is that the differences me in mean is actually zero versus the non-directional, uh, yeah, because then we do the negation and that is, it's simply different from zero. And what we need to do is calculate the observed T statistic and uh, there we take the, um, the two differences and it should, you can say there should be a minus zero there, but since it's zero, we don't write it. So the, the actual observed difference divided by square root over, uh, yeah, the sample deviations divided by nine because there are nine observations in one and the other sample deviation divided by nine. And then we get this value and then we go into the T distribution with these degrees of freedom and we go into that, and then we say, okay, I observed my t, observed t value here maybe, uh, 3.0, so may, it's maybe even out here, and then I take this area, and two times that, because it was a two-sided alternative, so I also need to add this one over here, and then I get my, my p-value, and then the p-value is, uh, yeah, the, the probability of observing this value or something more extreme, and that's in this case 0 0.008, so it's very, very small. So what we can con conclude, yeah, and in R we could cal calculate it like this, we can do that. And then we have to uh, say, is the evidence against the null hypothesis? And yes, it's very, very unlikely to get this result if the null hypothesis was true. And therefore, on a significance level of 5%, we will say yeah, the p-value is far below 5%, so we can conclude that we will reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a difference between the energy use in the, at these two hospitals. And in R, we could calculate the, the p-value by taking the distribution function with p, t, and then putting in uh, this observed t-value, and 1 minus that, times two. We need to multiply this times two. Yeah. That's it for now. A break till, uh, yeah, till nine o'clock.